Hi guys, welcome. I wanted to do something different this week, so we're gonna paint in the style of Picasso. Here's the list of materials for this week. So we're starting off with stretch canvas that I've gessoed and sanded ahead of time. I'm gonna use this sketch of a martini glass and olives that I did a couple of years ago as a basis for my design. I'm gonna try to keep the color scheme roughly the same. I'm also using one of my martini glasses. I really like the design in the stem on this one. I like how it's bent. It has kind of a wonky, fun, relaxed feel to it, and I think it's gonna make a very interesting design element. And now let's talk a little bit about the style that I'll be painting in today, Cubism. Cubism uh, is an art movement that originated in France in the early 20th century. It was a reaction against the traditional notions of art and aesthetic. One of the most important things they rejected was the idea of having a single viewpoint. What this means is that if you wanna paint in a Cubist style, you're not gonna look at your subject from just one angle. You're gonna approach your subject from as many angles as you can, and you're gonna focus on different elements of your subject, and you're gonna use all of those elements to basically deconstruct your subject and rearrange it on your canvas. And that's exactly what I'm doing at this stage. I'm looking at my martini glass, I'm looking at my sketch, and I'm taking elements that I find interesting and kind of playing with the angles, uh, basically using a lot of circles and ellipses and straight lines and also zigzag lines from uh, the wonky stem. And you guys, it's not a martini if it doesn't have olives, at least in my book. So I'm making sure that this painting has plenty of olives. And when I'm painting in this style, it's very much like an improvisation for me. I don't really know what I'm gonna end up with. I just kind of start putting stuff on the canvas and looking back and seeing if it works. Uh, the beauty of watercolor pencil is that if I don't like something, I can always wash it out and start over. And when working in the style, it's really up to you how crazy you wanna get. I wanted to still feel like I was looking at a martini glass, so I tried to stay true to certain design elements, but you can definitely go crazy and turn this into a completely unrecognizable piece. And now that I feel that the composition is starting to come together, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some value. And now that I'm happy with my underdrawing, I'm gonna move on to the next phase. I'm gonna use my angle brush and black paint to define and set in stone all of the lines that I like from my underdrawing. And I'm loading paint onto the very tip of my bristles. You really don't want the paint to touch or get anywhere near the ferrule because it can get inside of the ferrule and dry out and basically ruin your brush. Oh, and before I forget, this project took me two hours from start to finish in real time. And I'm not too good at circles, so... I'm using a plate. Now I'm gonna switch to my bright and I'm gonna block in my darkest areas. I'm amping up my darks and my lights 
uh, not to create the illusion of three-dimensionality because it's really not part of the style. I just want to create some interesting areas of contrast within my painting. And in Cubism, you also do away with any notion of perspective, at least in the traditional sense of the word. So I'm not interested in creating the illusion of distance anywhere in this painting. I definitely want to imply form, but not distance. And once you're done with this phase, if you like what you see, you can call it done. It would be essentially done. You don't need to colorize a cubist painting. I just wanted, I just really like the color scheme in my original sketch. So I'm gonna start adding those colors that you see there into that painting. And for the glazes, I'm using open medium. Uh, what that does is it makes the paint stay wet for a little bit longer so I have more time to blend and I don't have to rush when colorizing. And I like to colorize from the darkest values to the lightest. Uh, I'm starting with blue and kind of working my way from there. I don't really have a plan for how I'm going to color this. Starting to introduce some greens and yellows and then I'm going to leave the red for the end. And as always, prints of this and all my other work are available for sale at Fine Art America. The link is in the description box below. So now we're at the last phase of the painting. All my colors are in. All I have to do is come back with the black and redefine some of my lines, and I'm done. If you want to follow me on social media, links to my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are going to be in the description box below. If you'd like me to explore other art movements or artists, leave me a comment below. I'd be happy to do so. I had a blast with this painting. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I have new art videos every Thursday. Thank you so much for watching. I'm David Cavalin, and I'll see you guys next time.